Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Mass 5th Grade, Module 8, Lesson 6. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. So I can explain how the size of the product compares to the size of one factor. And the learning objective is to relate the size of the product compared to the size of one factor when multiplying fractions. And the prior learning is that students use the understanding that a multiple of AB is a multiple of 1 over B to multiply a fraction by a whole number, and students multiplied fractions by whole numbers using visual models and equations. All right, so flipping the page to 205, we have a word problem that says the painting shown is resized to three-fourths of its original size. How does the height of the resized painting compare to the height of the original painting? Is the height of the resized painting more or less than three-fourths of a foot? Okay, so for this problem, unfortunately, we are dealing with three, or I'm sorry, two three-fourths, and they are being used for different things. They aren't the same thing. So the height is three-fourths of a foot, and then the problem is saying that the sizing is three-fourths of three-fourths of a foot. So that does make it a little complicated, but I'll try to be as clear as possible, and I'll go through step by step. So we have a painting, and I'm just going to redraw this. The height here is saying that it is three-fourths of a foot. And if three-fourths of a foot is kind of confusing, just think about it. If you have 12 inches in a foot and you cut each of those into four pieces, that would leave you three inches. And then you have three of those three inches, that would be nine inches. So I'm just going to change that to be nine inches. So I don't keep saying three fourths and three fourths over and over again. And you're getting confused on what I'm talking about. So from here on, I have my painting that is nine inches. Then it's resized to three-fourths of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my, my length of the painting into four segments and show that three of those four segments is the new length of my painting. So what do we notice? All I did was take three of the four sections and then I showed you where that height is. What did you notice? It says, how does the height of the resized painting compare to the height of the original painting? How does it compare? It's a little smaller, right? It is shorter. And then is the height of the resized painting in red more or less than the original three-fourths of a foot? It's less, right? It is smaller. So we are going to be using this information as we move forward into the next page. So let's go ahead and flip the page. Let's go to page 206. And instead of having um, you guys work through this just because it is a brand new topic, I am going to go through this whole page uh, with you instead of having you pause, try it on your own, and then coming back. So for... Number one, it says a roller hockey puck typically weighs one-fourth of a pound. So here's my one-fourth of a pound. And this is a roller hockey puck. An ice hockey puck usually weighs three halves times as much as the roller hockey puck. Three halves as time is a little bit strange to hear. Usually when we hear a fraction of something, it is a true fraction. But in this case, it was... An improper fraction, I'm just gonna make my circle a little bit bigger there. Okay, so for A, it says write a multiplication expression, not equation, so no equal sign, just the expression to model the problem. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our original weight, which is one fourth of a pound, and we want to multiply it by how, ma how many times as much it was, and that was the three halves. So I'm taking the original and I'm multiplying it by how many times bigger or smaller it's telling me to go. So for B, it says, how do your factors from A compare to the number one? So in part A, my factors are the one fourth and the three over two. Well, my one fourth 
when I compare it using greater than or less than, that would be less than one. To where my three over two, I know that's an improper fraction. And if I have an improper fraction, that automa automatically means it's greater than one. So this is going to be greater than one. I'll just put a comment between. All right, so for C, what is the product of a number multiplied by one? This is kind of a silly question. What is the product, product means answer, of a number, any number, when you multiply it by one? And if you know your math facts, it doesn't change. It's the same original number. So it work, what I'm going to just say is it stays the same. Any number. Uh, let's take 5,162. When I multiply it by one, I get 5,162, right? It stays the same. It doesn't change, which we all know. And we'll see why that's important in a second. So for D, it says, will the product of a number multiplied by a factor greater than one be less than or greater than that number? And how do you know? So will the product of a number multiplied by a factor greater than one, what's greater than one? Mm, two. So if I take a number and I multiply it by two, will the answer be bigger or smaller? The number gets bigger, right? And how do you know? Well, because the answer gets bigger. So let's just say if I started with five times one, I know that's equal to five. It stayed the same. But then if I take that same number and I do it times two, the answer gets bigger. So to answer the question, it's going to be greater than, and it's because the answer gets bigger, or answer is larger. All right, so now for E, the point that is really coming across to you is predict whether the typical weight of an ice hockey puck is greater than, less than, or equal to the typical weight of a roller hockey puck. Explain your reasoning. So we actually aren't even solving this problem right now. All we're doing is we're predicting. We have the original weight as one fourth. I'm multiplying it by something bigger than one, and that's my three over two. Even though it's a fraction, it's still larger than one. So my answer is going to be bigger than one fourth. That ice hockey puck is gonna be larger because I'm multiplying it by something that's bigger than one. So up above, just to explain a little bit more, I said that five times one is five and five times two is equal to 10. But as we've learned, there's a lot of numbers in between one and two that are fractions or soon to come decimals. So what if I did five times one and a half? You have to ask, ask yourself, is one and a half bigger than one? Yes, it is, which means the answer is going to be bigger. As if, even if it was one and one over 100th, if that number is larger than one, the answer is going to be bigger than what it was originally. So in this case, with our three over two, I know that that is, would be equal to one and a half. So my answer is going to be larger than the original one fourth. All right, and we are going to expand on that on the next lesson. But first, go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems, and I will see you back here for Module 8, Lesson 7.